Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit more about ebook production. And I'm not sure I've actually tackled this. And I'm going to show you the tool that I use on Linux to develop the ebooks. So, of course, I have a bunch of ebooks. And uh, as of right now, I write in the Christian field. I do have some non Christian books coming out soon. Um, but what I want to talk about today is how I make ebooks in Linux and why we might want to use this method instead of there are tools where you can take a manuscript and upload it and it'll spit out an ebook for you. The problem is that I haven't found those that are particularly good quality. And so I'm going to show you here uh, the sample that we're going to use is my book, I Am Not Amused. Let me hold it at a slight angle. You can actually see it a little bit better. I'll go and get glare off of that. And uh, this is just on a Samsung uh, tab. So here I have my basic table of contents. I can, uh, let me just click anywhere. Oh, do I have, to? I'm going to have to intentionally click a button, aren't I? There we are. So here we can see that I actually have my own fonts embedded into there. So my title is its own special font. Um, and then I even have my section headers or different fonts. Now, one of the limitations is not every single e-reader out there is going to have every single feature you can put in. That's just a limitation of e-readers, uh, particularly on Linux. Um, I'm liking this bookworm e-reader. Um, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the other ones um, out there, but we'll have a look at a couple of those as well. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to my uh, build where we can work with this. Let me do my desktop view without my camera because my lighting is not particularly good today. All right. So over here, um, like I said, this is the book running on um, Bookworm is what the name of this one is. So you can see here is just kind of the title and then I can go down here and then we have, you know, your table of contents, of course. And then click in here, you can see that we are, uh, our embedded fonts are actually displaying. I have, this is supposed to be italics, which it is. So you can see there's actually a lot of, uh, a lot of neat stuff in here. Let me just find a section. There we go. See, I have my own uh, custom fonts embedded in the section headers as well. Now it doesn't look super duper good here. That's just a limitation of the ebook reader. Um, here uh, is our bibliography, our references, all these types of things we have in there. Uh, let me go ahead and boot up FB Reader as well. Um, you can see this one here, it actually does not, for whatever reason, FB Reader on Linux. I think the book reads better, but it does not allow your custom fonts. Um, hey, but at least we can have custom fonts on a lot of things. Any of your full professional, like your full... Um, uh, Kobu, I'm pretty sure, although I haven't tested that one. I know um, iBooks, which is one of the things I use to test my eBooks, and also uh, Kindle. Those will display absolutely beautifully. They will display every bit of formatting you intend to display, your custom fonts, all that kind of stuff. So what do I actually use to make these? Now, I will, will actually be having an, a, um, a course on how to do this from start to finish. So we're not going to cover a lot. We're just going to basically look at the application, which is uh, going to be called Sigil or Sigil. I don't know how you pronounce this thing. S-I-G-I-L. You can find it on any Linux distribution. So when you boot this guy up, you can see that it's basically like an editor. We can jump between this uh, book view is what the thing is going to look like on many book readers. We have a code view. Now remember an ebook, all an ebook is at least in a EPUB format, which is the open source ebook formatting. All it is is an XHTML document with a few specific files bound up inside of a zip file renamed as .epub. And that's an exciting thing to know. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> if you take an a, uh, audio or an ebook that you have and rename it as a .zip, you can actually open it up and see what's in there. Um, so we basically will have some text files. Styles is related for CSS. Images, of course, are pictures that you have in your book. Fonts, uh, those are the fonts you're embedding. If you're embedding audio or video, which I've actually never done. Um, and then anything else miscellaneous. Now this toc.ncx and the content.opf, these are two of the files that are necessary. They're basically like eight um, XML files. Um, you can kind of see what the formatting of these guys look like. Um, just how they're they're formatted, what they do. Of course, this uh, this thing here also has under tools. We can add a cover editor. We have a metadata, which is where we can add information about the authors, the description, things like that. You also have the ability to build your table of contexts, things like that. 
Uh, so with that, we're going to close that down and just go ahead and open this book up. So this is actually the ebook we have been looking at. And uh, you can see here it's loading up to the cover. So this is the full book that was ready for production. Of course, this guy here is a picture. When you're doing your ebooks, you generally are going to want to have a cover picture and you actually want to have a title page picture as well. Um, now, I actually did one of my books using the embedded fonts and things. It doesn't work nearly as well as producing for yourself just a static image. This is what the professional guys do. So if we were to dive into our images, you'll see that here we actually have, this is the ebook cover and this is the inner picture. You'll see that these are each pop up as one of these guys here. All right, we also have embedded in here our style sheets. Sometimes I use one style sheet, sometimes I use two. I'll generally use a separate style sheet for the copyright page or just add a line and wrap my um, copyright page into certain CSS. So if you are familiar with HTML and or CSS, you will actually be able to know how to do an ebook. If you're unfamiliar with those things, this tool, this application will actually help you, but understanding those is going to help you out. We also have two fonts embedded, of course, in my books where possible. I actually use fonts that are uh, open source. Uh, the few exceptions I did is my book, um, uh, Art of Shallow Neighboring. Since that was a parody book, I did actually buy font licenses for all the fonts in there because I wanted the exact fonts that the original book used. The other one is Happy Holidays. There is one font we could not get a good fire effect going for the cover. Uh, for the book cover of that without having a uh, without actually buying a much better much more elaborate font so we did end up buying a font for that for the most part though I do get fonts that do not have any restrictions against embedding just be aware that you cannot just even if you buy a font license it does not necessarily mean you can embed it inside an ebook like this you have to make sure that you have an ebook distribution font license that is a specific thing or a um, uh, a e-format distribution font license. So uh, with these ones here, the two, uh, the two fonts that I'm using for this book, Alpha Echo and Stardust Stencil, these two guys here are both free and open source fonts. They do not have any restrictions events where or how I can use them. And this is one of the reasons why I like doing these without having to buy the font licenses is so that I can make my books look more professional. Why do I want to use this system and take a little bit more time to build it? instead of just using a free upload tool because we have a lot more flexibility in what we can do and how we can do it. All right, so of course we looked at our styles, we looked at our images. Again, I'm not using anything in the audio, the video, or the miscellaneous. Now what I like to do, and this is kind of optional and I do it for organization purposes, is that each chapter has its own X HTML file. You can do, you know, one or two files, split the book halfway down the middle, things like that. I actually find it's easier to work with and it's actually is more professional. If you were to take a full fledged professional ebook and open it up, it's going to look a little bit more like this. I am not sure what happens if you were to just create an ebook utilizing one of the processing tools. Of course, this is the cover. Um, and you can see what you're doing here is it's just calling the image in here with the cover. That's all it's doing. Uh, title page. This is actually, you'll see that there is a distinct difference between the cover and the title page just because the title page is technically just an interior book. The cover is a specific type of file that you are using because this is what's actually called and, and known to be a title page. Table of contents. Now I'll of course link my table of contents to the individual section and then I'll link the section back to the table of contents. This is another thing that I have not seen in all of the eBooks that are out there. But if if you're on any chapter at the top top and you click the the um, uh, the chapter title for the book, you will go back to the table of contents. It does give you another way to get back to the table of contents. I recognize that you do have the ability to pull up the menu in most of your applications. Um, so you can see here we have a bibliography, the appendices all of the individual chapters. And again, it's just an HTML. Here's your book view. You can see that we're using an ordered list. So everything just gives me a nice listing here. And then if you actually look at this table of contents, you'll see H1. And then remember our style sheet H1 uses the Alpha Echo font family that I'm using right up here. So you can kind of see what we're doing with that. Uh, let's just open up a random chapter. So this is kind of what our random chapters look like. Again, we're calling the style sheet. We have our H1. 
you can see that this href here is our link back to the table of contents. So our chapter titles always will link back to the table of contents. And then what I do here, what is this? this is uh, this is chapter two. Let's go down to this is a more typical chapter because I actually start my chapters with these block quotes. And you can see that this is a block quote with a class tag of a chapter. And so this is what specifies these as being um, these guys as being our um, italicized. You'll see here we also have a block quote in here as well. Just some basic, simple HTML markup. Let's go ahead and look at the book view of this one. You can see here, um, you can see that this guy here is reporting our custom fonts. This is reporting my custom fonts. Here is a block quote. Um, so this one is heavy on the Bible verses here. Here's a block quote here. And so you can actually have a look at these. All right, um, so you can kind of see what uh, what this is going to look like. Now, the other thing that you want to make sure that you have is metadata is critically important. You want to make sure that you get your metadata. Now, I actually used to do all this stuff here and then export it into Calibri and do metadata over there. Warning, Calibri does not give you a full-fledged validated file. Now, it will technically validate, but a Calibri EPUB file breaks on iBook. That means that Apple users will not be able to access the table of contents. So I just kind of forced myself to use the metadata uh, editor for this. So you can kind of see what it looks like. We have the data. This is one of our subjects. So I have uh, three basic subject lines there. Um, I have Christian living. I have sociology. I have the popular arts. We have media entertainment is another one. This is the title of the book. This is the creator. So you can see that this is who the author is listed as. Here is the publication date. Now this is a huge description. If I were to, to edit this guy, uh, can I edit it? Okay, I guess you just have to edit here. See, it's just a bunch of stuff. This will accept your HTML. So I will usually just create this in either some ex uh, external program, just make sure it looks right, and then just copy and paste it in. Um, this identifier is the ISBN number. And then here is the publisher, and this is the declared language. So you can go ahead and create all of your metadata. When you create it in Sigil, it is going to validate, and it is actually also going to work with iBooks. Now, there is one thing, though, that I notice, um, and that is that it is going to give you one extra tag, which this one's not uh, going to give it to me because there's one extra header tag that Sigil will add that will technically validate, but if you're distributing your books through Lightning Source or Ingram Spark, it will actually kick the book back out. And I forget what that meta tag is, but you'll see it. It'll add to the top of each of your HTML documents. Pull that out, the file still validates, and it works perfectly fine on that distribution. If you're just distributing through Amazon KDP, it doesn't matter. Those tags can stay. All right, other tools is once that you have all of your system done, you want to come down, you want to um, you want to come into here and you want to update, run both of these tools, generate NCX. Remember the NCX is that special file down here at the bottom, the toc.ncx. You want that created when you are happy with everything else. You also want to update the manifest properties. That's the content.opf file. So you're going to make sure that everything is good, validate all the sheets, make sure everything is nice and clean, and you will be good to go. Now, one question I may not have yet answered. How did I get the book into here? Obviously, I did not type it into here. Well, using LibreOffice, I export it as an EPUB, which is something you can do. It is going to bring a ton of markup with it. Every application is going to export markup. You know, the markup in Word is really bad. Markup in LibreOffice is really bad. It takes me about 20 minutes or so and I go through and actually scrub all of that access code out. I leave myself with my simple paragraph tags and then I go back through my manuscript and I re-add the block quotes, the italicize, and things like that back in. Now, 
Could we leave all that stuff in there? You could in theory, but it's going to make your file a lot larger. It's going to make it slower to read on an ebook. And with this formatting, how clean and how simple these ebooks are, they work fast, they're light. Uh, in fact, the only ebook I have that actually is a fairly large in size is Happy Holidays, and that's because we actually have a number of other images embedded in with the files as well. And so that's actually what created that one to be a little bit bigger. But this is Sigil. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through all of the ins and outs, but uh, hopefully you guys will have seen just enough here that if you're working on doing an ebook, this will give you a start. If you are not, uh, if you are working on a book and you're not sure if you want to attempt to work with this, I do sell a service to create an ebook for you. I will get you a perfectly validated book that will upload to any of the services you want. Uh, just go ahead and email me for. Uh, the details. I will also leave a link to the uh, this particular ebook uh, in the description down below. So if you're interested in this, take a look at that book. I'll also leave my Christian website in the case you are interested in that. You can go to that site. You can see all the information I have on all the books and the other stuff attached with that. I realize it's not the audience for everybody, um, but for those that are interested, that link will be in the description down below. So thanks for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.